In this video, I want to review for you the Aspen Avionics 2000 setup in my 1973 Beechcraft Baron after two months of use. The Aspen 2000 system consists of an Aspen Primary 1000 Max Pro and an MFD 1000 Max Pro together. The pros in brief uh, of this setup is the Aspen system allows for modular installation, which makes it more affordable. It is a simple incremental upgrade for an integrated glass panel avionics setup, and it's compatible with many certified aircraft, including Beach, Pipers, and Cessnas. The Aspen 2000 allows removal of the vacuum system in some aircraft because the multifunctional display is a full backup of, of the primary flight display. The cons or drawbacks of an Aspen setup is you have more dependency on electricity of the primary flight instruments and if you have an electrical failure you're dependent upon the battery in the device which may only last 30 minutes the glass panel draws more amps from your alternator and and also if you're not used to looking at a, a liquid crystal display lcd screen glass panel it could be overwhelming for someone who's not familiar with a glass panel or more modern fancy avionics and so um the, these type of flight, primary flight uh, instruments that are a glass panel, they depend upon a air data computer, sometimes referred to as an AHERS, and also a GPS signal, which if that is degraded, then you could get a uh, degraded enunciation or a, a red X on the screen, which could be a drawback. Competitors to the Aspen avionics systems that I considered include the Dynon uh, avionics uh, manufacturer and uh, Garmin. Uh, the models that I looked at in Garmin include the Garmin G5 and the Garmin uh, 275 uh, integrated uh, devices. In my situation, I, I my airplane was already in the uh, Aspen environment and I had an Aspen uh, EFD 1000 installed and uh, my steam gauge altimeter and vertical speed indicator were aging and they were installed in the factory in 1973 and they were due for a pedostatic check because they were off and uh, so and also my Aspen EFD was overdue for an update and so I elected to have it removed and replaced with a new Aspen uh, Evolution Max Pro 1000 and then added the second uh, MFD unit which as I mentioned earlier acts as a backup to the primary flight display and so that is the Aspen 2000 that we're considering here. And in this video, I'm flying my 1973 Beechcraft Baron uh, B-55, and I'm just in the traffic pattern doing close traffic. And I'm, this is sort of a flight test to show you how the displays work and to monitor the electrical load. My aircraft has two alternators, and we're just making sure that everything's working electrically and that the navigation is, is working with the Garmin 530 GPS in uh, my Baron. So my my uh, Garmin 530 has WAS, uh, and that, that was installed, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and it remains functional, and I, I plan to continue to use the Garmin 530 uh, in conjunction with the Aspen primary flight display. So, um, It just made sense to go ahead and you know install the the Aspen 530, and the, and one of the reasons uh, for that is that I wanted to do this is because oftentimes on my Garmin 530, which is a five-inch screen, you can only show one page at a time, 
So if you're toggling between the moving map display and the flight plan page or the vertical navigation page or the nearest page, you can only show one thing at a time. And so adding another screen uh, with the, mul the multifunctional display, you would always have the top down display so that you, you can use your, your additional screens on the, the Garmin 530 to look at flight plan or uh, vertical navigation to plan your descent. So the options that you have when you install an Aspen primary flight display include synthetic vision, angle of attack, the, um, the uh, radar altimeter. There's, there's a few things that, that can be displayed on the, the Aspen and I'll kind of get more into that and how you, um, you know, use your Aspen. So I, I think synthetic vision is a really great option and I would definitely recommend it. Uh, I was, I'm just very pleased with synthetic vision. And I think when you get into uh, instrument meteorological conditions, having synthetic vision just really adds to your situational awareness and makes it easier to you know, visualize terrain even when you have uh, no visibility in the clouds. And, um, and so I also, on my multifunctional display, I turn on the, the terrain awareness so that you have a yellow or an orange uh, map in front of you that corresponds to terrain at your same altitude or higher. Uh, and also you, you have a few different options of the multifunctional display. You can have it so north is always up and you can also have it so your current heading is always oriented vertically, or you can do it the plane track in case it corrects for, for wind. And so I personally uh, set mine to track mode uh, so that it would correct for a crosswind. And this is just a personal preference. Um, there, I know there's the north up people and I'm more of a, a track mode person. And uh, most importantly though, if you do have a problem with your primary flight display, you have the revert button on the multifunctional display. And I did accidentally hit this. Uh, you can see in my Baron, my propeller knobs are very close to the multifunctional dis display, those blue knobs on the throttle quadrant. And uh, when I was exercising the, the prop by moving the, the blue knob, I noticed that I did accidentally hit the revert mode on the multifunctional display. So you have to be careful not to hit the revert button when you're moving the prop. And I think, you know, my review would, would state that uh, the multifunctional display does improve the situational awareness. I can use the, the Garmin 530 more efficiently without having to look over to the right and switch between panels as much. Uh, different pages on the uh, Garmin 530. Uh, also, I don't have to keep adjusting my my steam altimeter to match the Aspen primary flight display. So there's less tasks to do. And um, you know, there there is an option to add the instrument plates to the the Aspen system, so you can see the the instrument approach procedure plates and, and instrument uh, airport diagram on the Aspen screen. Um, I don't think I'm going to do this. And, and the reason I'm not going to is because I use Garmin Pilot on an iPad or on my phone. And those are touchscreen devices and it's just easier to move through the, the instrument plates on a touchscreen device, in my opinion, because you can just pinch and zoom and that seems to work better on a handheld device for me but um you know so, some people may may like using the uh the soft keys on the screen when you're in turbulence you have to stabilize your hand and make sure you don't put in the wrong input but uh so far i will highly recommend the aspen multifunctional display and mine was recommended by Dave Hanlane in uh, Ramona, California. 
and I put down my deposit and he was able to install it within two to three months. It was basically a one week uh, work order. I dropped it off and then one week later I picked it up and I would highly recommend Ramona Avionics for avionics work if you're in the SoCal or West Coast area. And uh, you know, the alternative to doing this incremental improvement would be to drop six figures and redo the entire panel and you know put in, in a, a large uh, JPI engine monitor and you know Garmin 750 screens, uh, touch screen GPS and Garmin G, GFC 600. And I would consider adding a GFC 600 eventually. Uh, I already have a Garmin G5 uh, on the very far right side of the panel for my co-pilot as a backup primary flight instrument. And, and that is compatible with the GFC 600. The, uh, for you single engine pilots, you would be considering the GFC 500. But at this time, my factory Century Autopilot works just fine. It's functional. I can fly coupled approaches, uh, coupled to the, the Garmin 530. And um, the other thing I considered, which I mentioned earlier, was a radar altimeter. A, as you may know, uh, radar altimeters, they use the same frequency as cell phone towers, the 5G signal and the plane is, is shooting this radar beam straight down and then it measures how long it takes to bounce back up. And there can be interference with tall buildings and cell phone tower signal. And this is why they tell you not to use your cell phone during takeoff and landing in commercial aircraft uh, due to the, the 5G interference. So I considered adding that. It would make, um, you know, ILS category approaches um, more feasible and, and when you're in low ceilings you have more accuracy and redundancy but ultimately I decided that uh, this is more of a want than a need uh, there's several radar altimeters that are compatible with the Aspen system the uh, King Collins Sperry the only one that currently has a supplemental type certificate for my Beechcraft Baron was the Garmin radar altimeter uh, GRA 55 and so uh, if any of you have experience with uh, GRA 55 I have yet to see a Baron with a uh, with a Garmin radar altimeter I've seen uh, several others that are for sale that have the the King um, one installed but uh, please leave comments if you've considered Aspen in your aircraft or you've had a good experience or a bad experience with Aspen and uh, you know thank you for watching